On today's episode of Hey Man, How Do You Do That? We're talking about irrational time signatures once more. This is because I got a tremendous amount of questions after posting the last video, and they all circled around the same basic gist. That is, how would you do this, but even crazier? If you haven't seen my last video on how to create irrational time signatures in Sibelius and Finale, now would be a good time to do that because I'm going to kind of assume that you know the basics. So have you heard of alto saxophonist and composer David Leon? He's just brilliant and inspiring, and I'd highly recommend you check out his music. David asks, if I have a five over three tuplet, five equally spaced attacks over three beats, and I want the full length of a measure to be two of those quintuplets over three, how do I notate that? Let me explain this more thoroughly for those of us who might not be sure what's going on. We are used to even subdivisions in Western music. For example, eighth notes and sixteenth notes. These rhythms are encouraged by the grid-based workflow of modern DAWs, or DAWs. However, the real world doesn't exist on a grid. We can play any number of notes within the space of any duration. The possibilities are literally infinite. These are usually referred to as polyrhythms. We can play 7 over 2, 31 over 13, or we can play 5 over 3. If you're interested in hearing live musicians perform insane rhythmic somersaults, I'd recommend checking out pianist Matt Mitchell or drummer Dan Weiss. Now, 5 over 3 is a very groovy polyrhythm. Here's what that sounds like. David wants to know, what if you wanted a full measure of just two of those five notes? This is a very complex rhythm, so there are a number of different solutions of varying levels of complexity. I'm going to share the solution that I find to be the most elegant. By elegant, I simply mean that this is the most concise notation that I could come up with. More text or ink to convey an idea in sheet music form more often than not will lead to more opportunities for confusion. The first thing we need to do is find the least common multiple of these two streams of rhythm. The least common multiple is the smallest number, not including zero, that is a multiple of both numbers. In this case, the least common multiple is 15. Thus, if we made a grid of 15 subdivisions, all of the hits would fit onto this grid. Now we're ready to choose our time signature. David's example happens to be five over three, but we need to remember that time signatures are always written in reference to a whole note. For example, the time signature three over four means we play three quarter notes and quarter notes are derived from dividing a whole note into four pieces. The least common multiple of our five over three example results in subdividing a quarter note into five. That means we subdivide a whole note by 20. So our denominator for a measure of two 5 over 3s would be 20. To figure out our time signature's numerator, we would multiply those two hits by 3 because each of our 5 hits is subdivided by 3. So our time signature would be 620. Now, we have to do some math to figure out what tempo at which these subdivisions will play. If you remember the equation from my last video, you take the original tempo divided by the original subdivision and then multiply that by the new subdivision. So that's 90 beats per minute divided by four and then multiplied by 20. This shows us that our measure of 620 will play back accurately at 450 beats per minute. Now let's open up Sibelius and begin engraving this beast. To save time, I'm going to show you how to create this time signature and make it play back correctly on Sibelius only. However, you can follow the same process in Finale if you watch my previous video. I wrote a quick groove and melody to illustrate how this 5 over 3 or 620 measure would sound. Check it out. Two and three and four and one and one, two, three, four, five, one, two, one and two and three and four. All right, so this is what the final product will look like. You've got your 620 measure here and it plays back seamlessly. I wrote this song to include a five over three right before we go into the measure of 620. That's really useful because it allows the musicians to get the subdivision in their head and to continue in that correct subdivision before they go back to the original tempo. Now, this is a particularly hard one. I've never tried to play this rhythm with other people. I would imagine it's going to take a lot of rehearsal. 
Uh, so keep that in mind. Don't write a measure of 620 for a reading session. So anyways, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to clear this measure so that I can show you exactly how I made this. So first of all, if you don't know, to create a 5 over 3 tuplet, normally a 5 over 3 that's complete and fits into the context of the uh, measure, you go to note input tuplets, click other, and then you have to write it as a ratio and you just write five colon three. The first thing we have to do is establish our base tempo because irrational time signatures are meaningless out of context. That's why I wrote a couple measures at quarter note equals 90. So we're gonna establish 90 as our base tempo. So I decided after some experimentation that it would make the most sense to write a bar of six eight to display the music the way that I want it to look. So I created a bar of six eight then I immediately hide that time signature because we never want to see that again. And then you write out the music. So this is what it looks like at the end of the day. You might notice that I have hidden some other uh, notes in the third voice, which is down here on the keypad. The reason I did that is because in order to get this to display correctly, I had to write it as eighth notes and a quarter note. So you'll notice that's one, two, three, four beats in this measure of six, eight. How is that possible? Here's two quarter notes. Here's just one quarter note in a bar of six, eight. So the way that I did that was by writing it the way I wanted to display and then hiding these uh, eighth notes because you don't want to see them. You want six beats to be present for the playback, right? But you don't want to see six beats. You only want to see these four beats. Once you've done all that, which took a minute because I tried a couple different uh, time signatures to see which one would lend itself most easily to this idea. Once you do that, you just go to text and under styles, you find time signatures special. You just click the first one, a regular one. You don't need them to be huge. And you just type six, press enter, and then 20 and it'll show up on every staff and look pretty great. This isn't gonna play back at the right tempo as you might remember from my last video. To get it to play back correctly, you have to write in the tempo and then hide it. So we're gonna do eighth note equals 450. The reason it's eighth note equals 450 and not quarter note equals 450 is because I used a bar of six eight. If you used a bar of six four, you would want a quarter note equals 450. Basically, the equation tells you what the pulse is gonna be in the new time signature. So keep that in mind. Then you press shift control hide. Make sure you write your new tempo on the next measure and hide that as well. And there you go. This is gonna play back correctly. There's only one step left, which is to indicate that these subdivisions are five over three and as you'll remember from my last video, we do that with an open bracket. I'm gonna show you a cool thing you can do on Sibelius and Finale as well actually, which is to use graphics inside your score. And the way that I created these five over three brackets was to simply press shift command four, screen grab this bracket. You wanna make sure it's cropped as closely as possible so you don't have a bunch of extra white space above and below this bracket because that's gonna conflict with the rest of the notes in the score. You don't wanna get that end bracket. You want to go just to the end of the bracket there. Screen grab this. Now that's gonna go onto my desktop. Wherever your screen captures save, go to symbols, click this drop down menu to edit symbols. And just like we did last time, you create your own symbol. Empty space, click new, go to graphic, import, and then you take your screen grab. And there you go, it's gonna become your main symbol. I already did it, so let's look at it here. You might notice that I changed it to negative 11 spaces, so uh, that allowed me to see the full bracket and then scale 130%, made it a little smaller so that when you add it by going to symbols, Go down to your user symbols, you'll find it here. And when you add it, it's basically the same size, except it doesn't have the end of the bracket. What this is doing is it's signifying to the player that we're playing these same subdivisions, five over three, but we're only playing some of them. In this case, we're only playing two of them. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, and then we're moving on. So the open bracket, again, is just a convention that I've seen in a lot of different scores, and I think it is pretty uh, clear what it means. Then I just alt-click and position them. You have to do this on every measure because it has to be reflected 
in the entire score. And there you go. So now we have this. Now, before signing off, I wanted to consider a comment from my last video. And I'm so sorry, I had to delete that video and re-upload it. And so all the comments got deleted. I don't know who left this comment, but if you would, just let me know in the comments to this video and I'll shout you out. This person said, I'm looking forward to a composition with X over the square root of pi as a time signature. And of course I thought that was hilarious, but then I started thinking about it more and I realized I, I just wanted to know what that would sound like. And I want to convey to you that it's totally possible to experiment with these things. Don't write off an idea like that. What would three over the square root of pi sound like? I mean, what would that mean? How would that sound? I imagine if it were possible, it would probably sound cool because pi is such a beautiful number. Pi is the fraction of the circumference to the diameter of a circle, right? So it's a, something that just occurs naturally and it's an irrational number in and of itself. Um, it has a precise value, but that value can't be expressed with a finite number of digits. That in and of itself just makes it such a fascinating number. The square root of pi, then, is necessarily also an irrational number. It also has a finite value, but it can't be expressed in real numbers. So what I did is I actually took out my calculator and I found out that the square root of pi rounds off to 1.77245385 dot 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 for infinity. But that's nine decimal points that I just said, and that's pretty damn precise. So you could absolutely theoretically figure out a way to make this playback on Sibelius. Then you could export it as MIDI into Logic and through playing along with that track, begin to memorize how the square root of pi feels in the context of another tempo. And to me, that's an interesting idea and it merited trying it out. So let's set up our equation again in our original tempo, quarter note equals 90. We do 90 divided by four because we're in four, four. So 90 over four equals x over 1.77245385 then you solve for x you find out that x uh, in other words our new tempo is 39.88021164.75 now that's a very precise tempo you could probably just round out to x equals 40 and a listener would never really hear the difference in that subtle gradation of time i used the more complex number just to be as accurate as possible that's going to be our temporary tempo for this three over the square root of pi measure to create the symbol you're going to need some kind of editing software i used final cut pro and all you do is make a basic title text you can write out the square root of pi using the shortcuts option V for this square root symbol and then option P for the pi symbol. Then you just put it over a white background. I also added a little line through it. And the reason I did that was because everything inside of this screen grab is going to show up in Sibelius. And this line does a pretty good job of making it look like the background is transparent, if you will. Then you have to make it a little bit smaller. I made it 25% of scale. And you have to move it down to negative one spaces so that it sits evenly between the B line and the E line on the staff. Once you've created this pi symbol, you just create another new symbol. And for this, you use the number three as your main symbol. You move it up and then you add your special little pi symbol that you just made. Move that so that they're vertically aligned. And voila, now you've got yourself a beautiful three over pi symbol. Then you simply add it from your user symbols, which are found down here. You have to make sure you put it on every single staff. For this composition, I just used three over the square root of pi meaning we're gonna have three beats whose subdivision is equal to the square root of pi in the context of this original tempo. The square root of pi being uh, 1.7724, it turns out that the new tempo is just a little less than half time. So I think this is gonna be basically impossible to play, but let's hear what it sounds like anyways. So I created my three over pi symbol. I also forgot to mention that you have to create a new tempo. Quarter note equals 39.8802. Hit that. And then here, quarter note equals 90. Hide that. 
And there you go, you've created a measure that is technically three over the square root of pi. So it goes from four, four to three square root of pi back to four, four. It begs the question, why though? Why would you do this? If you think it sounds cool, then that's good enough of a reason for me. This whole exercise was simply to prove a point. Anything is possible. With some workarounds and some common sense, you can follow your imagination. So I appreciate you listening and watching. Check out my score study series. I just put out a video called Fractals in the Music of Carla Bley. Check out my big band, Big Heart Machine. We just put out a new record. Keep your eyes peeled for the new record for my band. Little, we have a record coming out called Viscera. Stay tuned for more videos coming soon. <laughs>